So Tanya, tell us a little bit about who Jimmy was mm -hmm. and the family. Okay. So uh, Jimmy uh, was 21 years old, January 22nd, uh, 2019. Uh, he was shot and killed by Officer Sun Kim, who is an Atlanta police officer in uh, the Allen Temple apartment complex, that I think it's called Allen Hills now. And uh, the information that we have is that um, prior to that day, the day he was shot by Officer Kim, there had been an allegation that he had committed a robbery of somebody that, that um, probably about two or three weeks before uh, a girl accused him of taking her cell phone with a ton. Um, so APD gets an arrest warrant and they farm this arrest warrant out to the FBI fugitive task force, right? So it's this run of the mill um, supposed armed robbery that occurred a very basic, simple arrest warrant that somehow gets handed to this FBI fugitive squad task force to execute. Now we'll talk about the armed robbery in a second, which we completely debunked. We, mm -hmm. we found the witness who said it was all fabricated. Um, but at the end of the day, they show up at this apartment complex because they hear that Jimmy is there uh, with his children. His, his, the mother of his children lives in this complex, and he wasn't back there. He was watching the kids that morning. So these cops show up, and actually, I, I mean, I call them cops, but they really showed up military style. I mean, this was like if you, I can't remember the name of that movie that talked about how um, Osama bin Laden was ultimately captured at his compound. Zero Dark Thirty. Zero Dark Thirty. Well, you know, there was a squad who was armed similar to the squad in, in Zero Dark Thirty that descended on this apartment complex at like seven o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday before the Super Bowl. Seven o'clock, kids are like getting ready for school. You know, we were, you were out there with me when we mm -hmm. were talking to the residents, like what yeah. happened? They're, they're describing how they're, you know, they're, they're sending their kid out the door to walk to the bus stop and all of a sudden they see cops running with ass assault style weapons, you know, and they're trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, but basically they, they, they come onto this property looking for Jimmy to uh, execute this, this run-of-the-mill armed robbery warrant. Um, Jimmy uh, takes off running, you know, uh, like so many young black men do when they see the cops, you know. Um, he took off running. He was afraid. Uh, I probably would have been afraid, too. Uh, but he took off running, ultimately sought refuge in a friend's apartment. He was unarmed completely. Um, he was hiding in the closet. The police eventually figured out where he was came into the room, ordered him out of the closet with his hands up, ordered him to surrender, um, at which point he was coming out of the closet with his hands up. This has been confirmed for us, um, for the family in various meetings with law enforcement as he's coming out of the closet with his hands up. Uh, he is shot in the face by Officer Sun Kim. Um, the reason um, that was proffered by Kim was that his fingers looked like a gun at the time that he was raising his hand. I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So 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 now your hands. Look now like now hands. hands are weapons. So it's not just cell phones it like and it. Snickers yeah. and you know, wallets. Yeah. Now, now your hands themselves look like weapons. So so he shot and dies um, on the scene almost immediately. He was a father of two children. He had two small children. Um, a huge family. A uh, huge family. He was the youngest boy on his mother's side. He has seven sisters. He was a baby boy, the baby. Um, not the baby, not the youngest, but the youngest boy, and um, just beloved by his sisters. Um, his dad had uh, additional children as well. He had two brothers on his dad's side, so just a big family that really loved this kid, you know. And um, no criminal, no, no felony convictions. You know, this is not a kid that's out here uh, with a significant criminal history. You know, he may have had a brush or two, a misdemeanor here or there, but nothing. Nothing that would justify the level of force that they approached him with. And so um, at the scene, you know, the family, uh, I, I was not called that day. I think I was called the next day. And the next day, they, you know, their problem was that they had been out there trying to find out what was wrong, what happened, where is he, you know, who did what. And, and no one would talk to them. They were literally outside the yellow tape. and. Um, everybody was treating them like they were, in fact, 
the criminals, that mm -hmm. Jimmy was the criminal, they were the criminals, and they weren't getting any answers. Mm -hmm. So that's that was really what we started off trying to, to do, is find out what happened. You know, where's, is there a body camera? What, what's the issue? Was he armed? And for a long time, they wouldn't even confirm that he was unarmed. You know, they tried to pretend like, well, we're still investigating that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so anyway, that, that just, that started this long journey, which we were seven months in, of um, constantly fighting just about everybody for answers, uh, for transparency, and for accountability. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, in that seven-month journey, because Tanya called me that the day after, um, when she was retained by the family to represent them, and we went and did a walkthrough in the Allen Temple, Allen Hills uh, apartment complex, and we saw the aftermath, the blood, yeah. um, everything. Yeah, blood was still there. Yeah, and just talking to the candy lady uh, whose house he was in and talking to the witnesses and the neighbors, it just, it was a horrific scene. And, but the more telling and, and angering part about it was the response from Atlanta police, from the city of Atlanta, was to hide this yeah. uh, in front of the Super Bowl. Because right. this is exactly why Colin Kaepernick was taking a knee. That's right. why so many people were boycotting. Uh, this is the reason why we reached out to some of the artists in the community to tell them about what was going on. And it just infuriated me, the family, everybody around us, and we galvanized with, with organizers, and we started organizing. Right. So we went to the Sneaker Bowl, uh, we shut down the Sneaker Bowl, um, and then we went to City Hall, shut down City Hall, uh, then we marched, shut down the police department, uh, and we finally, before the town hall, got a meeting with the mayor right. and, and the police chief uh, in front of going to the town hall, which was at um, Cascade United Methodist. Uh, and so since then, you know, there have been some meetings, but there's still been no results to give this family answers about what happened to Jimmy Atchison. And so now, um, next Saturday, we're going to have a protest at uh, the federal courthouse. And the reason we're going to the federal courthouse is because uh, the U.S. Attorney and the FBI have still not turned over all of the information concerning the death of Jimmy Atchison, and we're demanding that B.J. Pack, the U.S. Attorney, turn over all this information. Absolutely. Um, and so we're going to go out there. We would ask all of the listeners within the sound of my voice and those that will be listening on the replay uh, to set aside 2 o'clock uh, on August the 10th uh, to come to 75 Spring Street, which is the federal courthouse, and send a message to Mr. Pop and, and to um, the, the FBI to release all the information to the Fulton County District Attorney's Office so we can hold Officer Sun Kim accountable. He's still on desk duty, mm -hmm. still drawing a paycheck, mm -hmm. uh, still an officer. Uh, we hear everybody's passing the buck, so um, we're going to make sure that everybody's held accountable, whether that's Keisha Lance Bottoms or B.J. Pack, because this family who's, you know, generations of Southwest Atlanta, uh, this young son of Southwest Atlanta, Jimmy Atchison, should never have died in such a horrific fashion, uh, unarmed, in a closet, in Allen Temple. And for people to still act like Atlanta does not have a problem, I'm going to send a message. And the message goes to two people. One is Keisha Lance Bottoms, and the other one is B.J. Pack. To Miss Bottoms, please don't go to De Detroit and think that the same thing that happened to Mayor de Bellagio won't happen to you. You got She got interrupted because he was ignoring Eric Garner. Well, you got your own Eric Garner here. His name is Jimmy Atchison. And B.J. Pop, you are an attorney. You are sworn to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. That does not mean covering up for law enforcement. Mm. So release the reports, and we can get to the bottom of this. But if you don't release the reports, then we're going to do what Americans are good at, been doing it for 200 years, and that's civil disobedience. Because this country was founded on a protest. And we will elevate the family's voice for justice. So please join us uh, August the 10th, 75 Spring Street, 2 o'clock. Um, we're going to bring a lot of people. We're going to bring the family. But we're going to bring justice for Jimmy. Because uh, you're going to say his name. His name is Jimmy Atchison. He mattered. His life mattered. It mattered to his children. It mattered to his family. It mattered to his, his girlfriend. It mattered to the entire Southwest community. I've met so many of his friends. Yeah. Um, and we want artists to come out. We want um, people who are concerned to come out. But we also want our elected officials. 
to come on out.